Hey, it's Frank here with Frank's DIY and Homeowner Help, and look at what I woke up to this morning. No toast. The toaster doesn't work. So we're going to have a look at it and see if it's worth uh, trying to fix. The way they make these things now, they're really that cheap that, I mean, you're not going to buy parts to fix a toaster. It's probably cheaper just to buy a new toaster. But we're going to have a look at it. We'll start the troubleshooting right now. I've uh, never done it before, never looked inside a toaster, but I've got a pretty good idea of how it works. First thing you got to make sure is that this thing's getting power because the way these things stay down, it used to be a mechanical latch, but now it's an electromagnet. So in other words, if the thing doesn't have electricity, if it doesn't have power, it's not going to stay locked down. So first thing we do is check the power, and we can see it's plugged in here. Uh, you can see this thing is plugged into the plug above, and that's working. But you have to check the actual, you have to check both plugs, because right now, or in, in most building code situations, kitchen plugs are split, kitchen outlets are split. So you should have two separate 20 amp circuits coming to here. For the very reason that if you plug a toaster in one and something like a blender in the other, you're not gonna pop circuit breakers. So anyway, we know the top one is working. That's this one, right? That's working. So let's put the toaster up in that one just to make sure. And no, it's still not working, you see? So we know at least that plug is getting power. And what we're gonna do is just check the cord itself. Make sure the cord isn't damaged. I mean, it takes a pretty sharp turn here. So let's just see if jiggling around changes it at all. And it doesn't. All right, so what we're gonna do, first and foremost, Unplug. Make sure you're safe. Unplug the electrical. And it is unplugged. And then we're going to take it apart and have a look at it. And I suspect, first of all, it's going to be full of breadcrumbs and stuff. But I suspect it's going to be a few screws down here at the bottom. I see a couple screws here that I can get at. And a couple screws here. So we'll start removing those screws and get into it. Yeah, so you got two screws here and a couple screws over here. I don't know if you saw them on camera before. So we'll get those screws off and see if we can take this whole thing, this whole stainless steel part should come right off and should show us all the guts of it. So let's get at her and see what we can do. Okay, so basically it is four Phillips screws. One, two, three, four, the number one. So hopefully this guy should get us in there. And once we remove those, that should get this cover off. Okay, that should do it. Let's see. Now this knob here is going to have to come up. Probably just, yeah, just through a little pull. I expect breadcrumbs to fly absolutely everywhere. So this knob's gonna have to come up too. Have to give it a little bit of help. Okay. I actually did have some glue in there, which is not the ordinary. Usually they're just uh, they're just friction pressed. Okay, so this is one going to come out, but it looks like these controls here are still holding that lip of the sheet metal in. Let's see if it comes out. Yeah, it'll come out. It'll come out with a bit of play. Okay, so there it is. Alright, so we will eventually clean it up. Let's have a look at what's supposed to happen here. So basically this comes down and okay, you see right here, you see these points right here. I'm going to zoom in, Let's see if we can get a close look there. Okay, you see right there, you have contact points. You see that? See how this gets pushed over to that to make contact, and this gets pushed over to that to make contact. So that's what's gonna open a circuit. 
when you're pushing this down that activates an electromagnet which is probably right here. See that? No, that's not going to be electromagnet. Magnet is going to be somewhere here. I'll, there's a couple contacts here too. So one of these, actually it might be one, two, and three, four. See that? That are uh, going to activate a magnet that basically holds them in place. Holds it down. And that will only happen if these make solid contact. Now they are making solid contact. You can see that, right? Here, let's get this out of the way. They are making good solid contact. But one thing I'm gonna do is just clean these contact points. Because again, if electricity is arcing between there and there, then that can get some crud on it, some carbon buildup, and actually prevent electricity from flowing between that. So there's that. Here's your uh, your knob, which is kind of a rheostat resistor knob here. See this here is what basically turns to uh, make your toast darker or not darker. And so what's happening is that's basically controlling the amount of resistance that the uh, elements produce in there or the amount of charging to a capacitor that controls how much resistance and heat those wires are putting out. And I don't know much more than that, but, uh, but it, you could have, you know, you got a cancel button here as well, which is going to cancel, open that, open those contacts or open the circuit somewhere. So that could be a failure point as well, right there. Um, the rheostat itself could be a failure point because it could, if it's at its lightest, lightest setting perpetually, then you're never going to get any, any toasting at all. And yeah, I think that's about it. It can be, I think this is the most likely cause though. It's most likely that one or both of those are not uh, not making good contact anymore. So I'm going to clean those up, and I think I'm just going to get a bit of sandpaper in there, which I have actually up here pretty close, and then plug it in and see if there's any difference, see if anything happens or anything changes. Other than that, like really, that's the only bit of maintenance that I can see that you could do. Everything else looks pretty good. Everything's connected. Nothing's broken. Looking at the uh, the electrical down here, again, this is not plugged in. You don't want to be doing this when it's plugged in. Like all these cables are connected and they're all connected seemingly where they're supposed to be. So really, I think this is our main possible, most likely point of failure. So we'll give it a clean and see if that makes any difference at all. And if it doesn't make a difference, then unfortunately this thing's going into the toaster graveyard, which is garbage. Okay, so I got a piece of sandpaper. This is 120 grit, but it doesn't really matter what you get. I also got a very thin slotted screwdriver so I can get the screwdriver in there, maybe help apply force with the sandpaper. Let's just see how it goes. You know what, I'm gonna fold the sandpaper over so that it's cleaning both contacts at the same time. Let's see how that works. Squeeze it together a little bit, get some resistance. That's definitely cleaning. Look at the sandpaper and see if there's any residue on there. Not much, but you can definitely see the line where it's where it's making contact with the contacts. Okay, we'll do the same here. Can you see what I'm doing here? Or am I blocking it? And then I mean doing this also might leave some of the sand residue from the sandpaper itself. So I'm just going to scrape it off with the screwdriver as well. Both sides. And then I'll get a little piece of paper towel in there just to hopefully remove any residue of the sandpaper. Much dirt came off there so I don't really know if that's gonna make any difference whatsoever but that's the most uh, most likely thing that I could think of 
that could be a problem. So this is what we're gonna do. We've cleaned it. Uh, I'm gonna plug it back in. I'm gonna put this thing on temporarily just so that we're not touching metal. There we go. And we're just gonna see if it if it's helped or if it's done anything whatsoever. Okay, it's plugged in now, let's see. Nada. No, nothing. So, there goes uh, my attempt at fixing this thing. Um, the next thing you can do, I'm gonna unplug it so that it's safe. The next thing you could do is put us, an ammeter on the circuit and determine what parts of it are failing. But again, if you gotta buy another circuit board for this or you've gotta buy another you know, set of contacts like that, you're better off just buying another toaster because who knows how long that's gonna last. And unfortunately, these things are made to be, they're made not to be fixed, they're made to be tossed. So uh, maybe if your toaster's not working, cleaning the contacts like that will help you or maybe it won't but at least we gave it a shot. So hopefully you learned something from Frank's DIY and homeownership help. Okay, so just before I wrap up this video, I'm just gonna show you where the, the magnet actually works. You see that, that there, that right there is the hook that grabs onto the release mechanism as it comes down. So below that hook right here, are the magnets. See that? See the magnet right there? So basically when the magnet is on, when there's power to the machine and it's working properly, the latch comes down, latches onto that hook, and I'm just going to apply the force that the magnet would apply with my screwdriver. Let's just see if I can get it in there. And you see that's the magnet is what holds it down. And then, so it's holding it down by a, an electromagnetic circuit, circuit, right, through electricity. Then when it reaches its, its preset temperature, or if it doesn't have any power, it opens the circuit, which releases the, the toaster. So, so for some reason, that's not getting electricity. That little magnet there is not getting electricity. And it's not, uh, not holding that, that latch, that latch there down, not able to hold the whole hold your toast down so again uh, don't know why it's not it's not happening but it's really not worth the time that it would take to to troubleshoot any further at least not for me maybe it will for you good luck